So to prove uh, that these two triangles are congruent, and by these two triangles, they want us to prove that that one is congruent to that one right there. We need to use one of these um, triangle congruence properties here, one of these five, and notice this is not a right triangle, so we're not gonna use the HL. We have to use either angle, side, angle, side, 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 angle, side, or angle, angle, side. So we no notice that we have, we have a side right here, and we also have that these are parallel to each other. So we have one side, so we're gonna use one of the side, well, they all have sides in them, you can't, you can't have three angles, right? So you also have um, this side right there is, as you'll notice, that is the reflexive property that that side is equal to itself, okay? So we need to find one more angle or one more side in order to prove it. So let's think through which one we're going to, or which we're going to use either side or angle. And you can remember that if you have two parallel lines, I'm going to make them longer so you can see it better. Those two lines are parallel. And if you have a transversal cutting those two lines, and we do have this transversal right here, you remember from parallel postulates that we can prove that angles are equal to each other by using those different postulates that are theorems that we had before. And namely, we're gonna prove that those two angles are equal to each other. So I'm gonna skip, I'm gonna just write given. I'm not gonna waste the time writing. You, you should write that out yourself when you do this. Uh, but now we're gonna prove that angle A, B, C, that's this angle right here, angle A, B, C is congruent to angle D, C, B, which is this angle right here. And the reason that we're going to give is because they are alternate interior angles, AIA. Some teachers let you just write the initials like that. Once you get to a certain point, others make you write out the entire postulate. Alternate interior angles are congruent. And alternate interior is the assumption that there are parallel lines. When lines are parallel, alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay, so we have that. And now the final step is simply going to be to state what, what we are supposed to prove, which is that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DCB. Oops, I didn't write the other thing first, sorry. I stated it, I didn't write it. So we have the given, and we also have to state that BC is congruent to BC, and that's because of the, of the reflexive property. So we have that by the reflexive property. Um, and now we have um, side, angle, side. We have a side that was given to us at the beginning. We have an angle that we showed by angle, alternate interior angles, and then we have another side. So now we can state that ABC, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DCB. And that is by side, angle side because our side was given our angle was the parallel postulate and our other side whoops yeah our other side right here was by the reflexive property side angle side so here's another example in the figure they're telling us that angles b and d are congruent to each other that's why i've got two uh, the, the double lines there to indicate that those are equal they're telling us that a those, those angles uh, DAE and BEA are equal to each other. And they want us to prove that these two triangles, ABE, the bigger triangle right there, let me outline that for you. So ABE is here, ABE, that one. They want us to prove that that one is congruent to angle E, D, a E D A right there. So that's what they're trying to have us prove. So let's go ahead and again just we're just gonna write one and two are given. Again, take your time to write them out, but I'm gonna for the sake of time just go ahead and scribble that in there. And so what we're gonna have to find is 
Uh, to prove that those two triangles are congruent, you'll notice that we already have two angles. So now really all we need is another side to show because then we will have angle, side, angle. Remember angle, side, angle is one of our um, triangle congruence properties that we can use. So can we see another side that they have that is equal to it? Sometimes it's the most obvious thing. It stares you right in the face. It's EA is congruent to EA. That line is congruent to itself. Right? Do you see how that line is in both triangles? That's in the pink, it, it's on the pink triangle and it's also on the yellow triangle. Yep, so anytime two, two triangles are overlapping, think of reflexive exactly, because reflexive will be one of the properties most likely that you will use. So now we can go straight to the final step, which, which is simply that ABE is congruent to triangle EDA. Now, you might want to do it this way, actually, to be honest with you. You might not want it. A lot of teachers would require or ask you to write to write it out a little bit differently. So let me let me show you what a lot of teachers will have you do. First, you can write that angle B is congruent to angle D, and that's given. Two, you'll say that those are equal to each other, AE and AE, because of reflexive. Three, you can say that angle DAE is congruent to angle BEA, and that's also given. But you'll notice that when you do that, you have angle, side, angle. And a lot of times teachers will suggest that you do it that way, that you write it in a specific order so that you've kind of, you're, you're not making a mistake and going in the wrong direction, which sometimes people do. It's not really necessary technically to do that, but some teachers require or request that you do that. So the final step would be that triangle ABE is congruent to triangle EDA, and that is by angle side angle, and you can see angle side angle right there.